Stage 7-1 primarily comes down to two things, that being tip number four and tip number six. We've talked a bit about tip number six and it's huge here. The charged electric spark is Armin Armadillo's weakness and if you hit him when he's not rolling around, it'll take off his armor. But this comes with the added bonus of bypassing Turt Lloyd's formidable defenses, where usually you're forced to take out those green gems before you can properly damage them. And if that wasn't enough, it also allows you to knock out all of those missiles that he shoots at you. So really tip number six is incredibly huge here. However, if you are running into some issues and you're not able to take out those missiles in a normal way, tip number four is also big. We're not gonna display it here, mainly because the charged electric spark does the job for us. But if you weren't able to use that for this partic uh, particular Maverick, what you could do is come to the top of the screen and use the hover boots to avoid the missile barrage, which is usually a little hard to take out with just the charge shot alone. But now that we have Arm and Armadillo out of the way, we've just got Rainy Turtloid. And as you can see, you can charge up the electric spark with enough time to knock out the missiles and damage Turtloid. That being said, when Turtloid runs around and starts shooting these projectiles at you as he rolls around, it's gonna be a lot harder to avoid. We've got enough health here that we can just take him out the normal way at this point though. But this is a case of where Tip number six can really change the tide of a battle. Neon Tiger and Chill Penguin are two Mavericks that we've dealt with before in this challenge. Just like before, we're gonna leave Chill Penguin for last and we're gonna go after Neon Tiger first. Now, really what you need to take advantage of is the fact that neither can do a lot of damage to you, even though some of these battles have really ramped up the difficulty and the damage. This isn't the case. For 7-2, they're really relying on the fact that they can try to bombard you with lots of projectiles and that is too much to deal with at once. Just focus on Neon Tiger, taking advantage of, again, tip number four, to use the hover boots to stay out of Chill Penguin's range, while also understanding by this point that when you continuously hit Neon Tiger with his weakness, he goes into a little bit of a pattern that is a little bit easier to exploit. So what you can do is you can focus on trying not to get with by, uh, by Neon Tiger in the air while also avoiding the projectiles that come below from Chill Penguin. Yes, you'll take some damage, but once you take Neon Tiger out, the whole thing becomes a relatively easy affair, just like usual for Chill Penguin. Keep in mind that he may try to jump into you, but other than that, hovering, using tip number four with the hover boots, will take you out of the way of a lot of his stuff. Really, when you're done with the pattern, you can just hover a little bit and just see what he's gonna do from there if you're worried about your reaction speed. It becomes a little bit of a slow battle, but there's not much to, to worry about in this case. Now, since we've already dealt with Chill Penguin in the past, I'm going to take a moment to speak about some of what we need to be ready for for the rest of this X Challenge. Things ramp up considerably for 7-3 for some of these. And in particular, Stage 9 is probably what a lot of you are going to be here for. You have to keep in mind that they're going to ramp up the ability to do damage repeatedly to you and each hit is going to do more damage. So we're gonna to try to be mindful of patterns and good spacing to be able to handle some of the combinations that these Mavericks will throw at you. So this was a little bit of one of the last good breathers you have. But once we're done with this, we've got a little bit of a doozy with the 7-3s. So, between Split Mushroom and Infinity Maginion, you have an incredible number of things that are gonna be thrown at you at the same time. 
So what you need to keep in mind is, to be honest, for this battle, throw tip number two out the window. They're trying to overwhelm you, and while you do have more health than normal, if you rely on that tip, you're just going to get overwhelmed by the sheer numbers. So what you need to do here is take advantage of tip number six, and in particular, even though Maginion may be considered the bigger threat, those who have faced both of these Mavericks, go ahead and take Split Mushroom out of the equation quickly, because you can take them out quickly if you place your shots right. As you can see here, you can place it so that it'll hit him while he's on the wall, while at the same time hitting him multiple times in one shot as he goes through his weakness cycle. Once you knock him out, you're stuck with Infinity Maginion and only Infinity Maginion. And really, the advice here, if you don't recall having faced Infinity Maginion, you may need to practice a little bit regarding his, uh, his patterns. He has a primary shot that will continue to go horizontal until it lines up with you, and then it'll go up or down to track you vertically. And other than that, that's the one to keep in mind the most, especially in the beginning. After that, take advantage of your charge shot, hit him where you can, prioritize knocking out the little green blobs or the duplicates so that you don't get overwhelmed by sheer numbers. Because once you got him down to just the primary form, it's not as big of a hassle. Keep in mind all the things that he can shoot at you and throw your way. And otherwise, it's not too bad. You just need to stay calm, practice dodging, and don't get overwhelmed. Don't panic and you'll make it through it. Shield Sheldon and Ground Scaravich, to me, were actually more difficult than dealing with Split Mushroom and Infinity Virginian. And the reason for that is just... <laughs> it's a little bit funny, but using the weakness for Ground Scaravich doesn't seem to work as well in this battle. And the spacing and the layout of this level make it a lot more difficult to deal with Shield Sheldon's shenanigans. Say that five times fast. But there's a little bit of a trick. There's actually two tricks here. The first trick is, if you hit Ground Scaravich with a charge shot, or even the Plasma Residual from the charge shot, he will switch, he will switch directions and go back from the direction he came from. Now, the reason I note this is, you can keep him away from one side of the screen if you're careful enough. The second thing is, Shield Sheldon has a spot as you can see, I've been hanging in one particular corner. He has a blind spot where there's really only two circumstances, at least in the first phase of his fight, that he can hit you. One is where he throws those two halves of his, of his shell, and the second is sometimes when he splits off and throws a projectile from across the screen. Other than that, he can't hit you from that spot. So really what you need to do is Start with the buster instead of the weaknesses this time. Stay on one side, manage your charge shot so that Ground Scaravich stays on the right side of the screen. Don't worry about attacking Shield Sheldon too much. Just dodge the ones that you need to dodge, but don't put yourself in too much risk. When Ground Scaravich gets to phase two for himself, then what you're gonna need to do is you may need to dash forward or duck under his rock shots. It's not too bad to deal with, although they can do a significant amount of damage if they catch you off guard. But a lot of it involves staying in one spot, and you're relatively safe in that spot. You're very unlikely to get overwhelmed if you keep Scaravage on one side of the screen. As you can see, there's a lot going on but it doesn't require me to have to move much until he starts throwing those shells at you. So, once you have Ground Scaravage taken care of, then you can bring out the Metal Anchor and start going to work on Shield Sheldon. There's no need to be too aggressive, although you can, but you might be at risk in running out of ammo if you are too aggressive. Just stay in your corner, understand that every so often 
pretty much every one or two attacks, he's going to go back to throwing those shells. Go ahead and jump over the one that would have normally hit you, or if you're ready to start getting closer, go ahead and climb over and then hit him with the metal anchor. Lather, rinse, repeat, and that will take you past the first half of his health bar. I'm going, I'm going ahead and using charge shots for some of these, just in case I start missing with some of these metal anchors. I just want to give myself a little bit of insurance because really the metal anchor isn't necessary for the first half of the fight. It just makes the thing not take forever. Once he's hit with those metal anchors, it'll knock him back and a little bit out of his pattern. He'll go to the next phase, but it does knock him out of the current attack, which is still useful in certain scenarios. But ducking in that corner, although <laughs> it doesn't seem like the bravest route, is definitely the most secure way to go ahead and get that victory. And as you can probably see, there is that one method through which he can fire the projectile at you and hit you in the corner. Now, when he gets to phase two, there's two primary attacks that are added, which you've seen if you've looked at my previous videos. The thing to note with that is if he uses his blue and orange shield, you can knock him out of that with the metal anchor. And if he divides himself into the four shells, just wait for him um, to go close to you and then just knock him out of that pattern. It's a patience game. It's a lot that you can get overwhelmed with if you don't have an established plan. But if you do, the whole thing takes so much less time. Well, that gets us through stage seven, but join us for stage eight, where I've got a bit of a plot twist lined up for you.